because this is the missing piece. You need something to tell you what the target curve is per speaker to get the best experience out of your gear. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about target curves and which one is the best for your home theater. Specifically, if you're running Dirac Live, you're gonna to wanna to watch this and share this video for other people that also use Dirac Live. Let's get into it. So I saw a post in the Onkyo Facebook users group and this is what they said. Been reading up on Magic Beans for true target Dirac curves seems interesting. And somebody commented saying Harman curves are good and they are free. So let's address that real quick. And just so you know, I have a lot of data for you guys. I got a lot of charts, free stuff usually. Well, you know, it isn't that good, right? Anything good? Yeah, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take money. It's gonna be something that's definitely good. So there's that part, you know, not everything free is good. That's the first thing. The second thing is the Harman curve. What is the Harman curve and why are we using it in home theater? So let's take a little trip back in time. Now, what this refers to is Dr. Floyd Tool's time at Harman. So he took the JBL M2 speaker and measured it in a multitude of different types of rooms. And then he kind of merged all of them together. And the Harman target curve is the average curve of all of those rooms using the JBL M2 speaker. Now the Harman target curve is used as a curve to tune your home theater system. And even when you talk to him now, my colleague, Mr. Joe Intel, who uh, helped me create the spatial audio calibration toolkit, he talks to Dr. Floyd Tool all the time. And when I talk to Joe, he tells me about when Dr. Tool says, I'm not sure why they're using that as a target curve. It wasn't intended for such a purpose. And that's blatantly obvious for people to see, but why they're using it as a target curve, who knows? So let's break down why this is not a good thing for you to do for your home theater. Number one is this, do you have a JBL M2 speaker? Because if you don't, then the curve means nothing, nothing to do with any of your speakers. So why would you use it? I, I wouldn't want to use it because I don't use that speaker, so why would it matter to me what the target curve is based on a speaker I don't have? It's a completely arbitrary curve that nobody should be using unless you have a room full of JBL M2 speakers. So what do you use? Because at the end of Direct Live calibration, you have the option of changing this curve. And with all the other AVR companies as well, they kind of just slap the Harman target curve in there and say, okay, well, here we go. Joe's been developing True Target Magic Beans for many, many years now. And I've tried many different iterations of it on a ton of different equipment in different spaces. And I think this is actually the best way to go. And what Magic Beans does is it creates a custom target curve for your room based on your speaker's capability, the distance to the main listening position and your room characteristics. And how does it know all of this? Well, instead of taking one measurement at the main listening position, it takes a measurement of the speaker near field. So it gets an idea of what the speaker is capable of. And then it takes a measurement of that speaker in the main listening position. And then the app can determine what the room is doing to the sound as the sound travels from the speaker to the main listening position. And with that information, it can create a custom target curve specifically for your room. Okay, so I have two Dolby Atmos systems, one in the bedroom and one here in the studio, two. One is 5.1.4, that's in the bedroom, and one is 9.1.6 here in the studio. Now, as you can see from both of these graphs here, these are the custom target curves that True Target by Magic Beans Audio has derived for these two spaces. And as you can see, they're totally different. I know in the TXRZ30 video, a lot of people are like, why is the bass so high? And that's due to the fact that I'm sitting up against the wall and we need more bass because of the location of the main listening position. If you look at the studio space, I'm sitting here in the middle of the room. As you can see, we don't need a huge bass rise and this looks somewhat normal, but it's still a little bit more different than your basement or your living room, wherever you happen to have it. So let's look at some graphs right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it took me a long time to gather this and try to figure out the best way to show you what Dirac is doing, or in this case, what Dirac is not doing. So in the upper left quadrant here, we have the default curve from the bedroom. Now you can see it says Onkyo because that's what I did the calibration on. That's in the bedroom, 5.1.4. And in the upper right corner, we have the Marantz AV10. The configuration is 9.1.6, and that is the default curve in the studio. 
Now the speaker we're working with, these are all the front left speakers. And on the bottom left is the true target curve for the bedroom. This is the curve that was derived from Magic Beans True Target. And on the bottom right, this is now the front left speaker in the studio. And that's a custom target curve for that particular speaker in that particular location. So why are we looking at these graphs? Simply put, if we're looking at the graphs here, you can see that Direct Live isn't really doing much as far as a target curve. The one thing that I want everybody to notice as we go down through all of these speaker locations is that Dirac Live, look at this, it's just placing pretty much a default curve and not doing anything that's customizing the sound or tailoring it to your space. And that's exactly what True Target by Magic Beans does. Let's take a deeper look. Now, before we jump into the nitty gritty, I wanna let you guys know we are having a sale on both Magic Beans and the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. It is our March Madness sale to get $100 off Magic Beans and $15 off Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. You're gonna need them both to get this dialed in. So let's look at what we have here for the front left speaker. In the bedroom, now these speakers are totally different. In the bedroom, it's the RBH. And you can see on the um, upper left graph here, we are not doing anything about this big dip. This big dip that happens around 3K to 5 or 6K or 8K or might even all the way be to 10K. But if you look at True Target, True Target is compensating for that dip. You see that? And we also have a, a base rise here in the True Target curve. Now don't get alarmed. I know a lot of you are like, oh my God, the base is getting huge. Remember, we're cutting this guy off at 80. So here's 100 Hertz and there's 80. So if we look now at the default curve here in the studio, it's applying pretty much the same curve. It's not adding this curtain at like, what is that? 14.9K. It's letting it ride all the way to 23,000 Hertz. But this is essentially the same thing. And this is an entirely different room with different speakers at that front left location. It doesn't make sense to me with this being a different room, this room actually has room treatments. So the equalization for that particular speaker in that location should be totally different. And of course, this is a full on rectangle here, whereas the bedroom's got all kinds of different obstacles. You know, there's a open section over here. There's a bathroom over in this area. It's open air. There's like vaulted ceiling. There's all kinds of different things, but it's still applying essentially the same curve for that speaker. That doesn't make sense to me, okay? As you can see here in the true target curve for the front left speaker, it's doing a little bit of equalization here, but overall it's pretty just net down and natural. Okay, now we're on to the center channel. And as we see here in the default target curves for both the bedroom and for the studio, we see something very similar. We got a little bit of a bump here in the base and it's pretty much flat, a little bit of a, no, that's just, yeah, that's along that line. So it's pretty much the same. And if we see the true target curves for the center channel here in both the bedroom and the studio, they're different, right? Moving on to the front right speaker. Here we are again. Oh, look, these curves are different than the front left speaker, but they're doing the same thing. Now, mind you, these are different speakers. The front speakers at home are the RBH uh, 85i and the front speakers here are the um, Monolith T6 Towers. So why is it applying the same curve to different speakers in different rooms? It doesn't make sense, ladies and gentlemen. It does not make sense. And look at this. True Target's got different curves because it's a different speaker in a different space. Does this all make sense now? All right, here we are with the surround right. Again, the default curves for both the bedroom and the studio are pretty much flat. Pretty much the same thing. A little bit change on the curtains here and there, but it's pretty much the same. So if we look at the true target curve for the bedroom, we see it's doing some equalization in this like um, one and a half to 2K region over here. Now these are different speakers. They're similar speakers, but they're different. These are the T5 towers from Monolith here in the studio. And these are the little uh, Monolith THX satellites. What's gonna be interesting though, is when we get to the high channels, because those speakers are identical in both rooms, but then they're in different places of those rooms. It's boosting to get rid of this little bit of a dip to correct. Okay, you'll notice that the colors are different and that's because the Marantz has 15 channels 
and the Ankyo only has nine. We are at surround left on all four of the graphs here. And again, default curve, mm -mm, not doing a whole lot in both locations, right? Different speakers. All right, here we go. Now we've got correction going on. True target curve for the bedroom. We've got correction uh, here at maybe 600 to 800 and a little bit of a dip here in the 2K region. And of course, we've got we got a little bit of a base rise going down and, and correcting for this dip at like 1200 to what, 3K, something like that. Yeah. Oh, the subwoofer. Look at this subwoofer. Now this is a 12 inch subwoofer and this is a 10 inch subwoofer. So there's that, it's a difference, but why is it, this thing is almost identical. Yes, there's a little bit of a rise here and there's a bigger curtain, um, but it's almost identical. Now here's what everybody was uh, getting crazy about. And this is this huge base rise. And that's due to the fact that, again, I'm sitting up against the wall. So in that location, we need more base. But here, when I'm sitting in the middle of the room, we don't. And that's why True Target has calculated this to be the appropriate target curve for the subwoofer. Totally different. Totally different than the bedroom and where you're located. However, Direct Live applying essentially the same curve. Oh, look at this. Now we're at the high channels and these speakers are identical, but they're in different locations. Again, vaulted ceilings in the bedroom. And here in the studio, they're still about six to eight inches above each height channel, right? The height channels are nine feet above the ground and we have 10 foot ceilings in this room. So give or take, but the default curve on both of these are essentially flat. There's a little bit of a dip over here. And what do we have for true target? Well, it's doing something, right? It's cutting this guy off at 68 Hertz. It's cutting this guy off at 48 Hertz. You know, it's got a little bit of a base rise. Remember, everything's going to be cut off at 80 hertz, so it doesn't get crazy in the base there. But we've got correction going on here. We've got correction going on here. Same speaker, two different locations, two different curves. I hope this is all making sense to you guys because this makes perfect sense to me. Height one right. Again, identical speakers. The default Dirac curve is just letting the speakers do what they want to do. And this is kind of the danger, right? You spend all this money and time and, you know, Dirac Live license for the AV10 is expensive, especially if you go with bass control or bass management or whatever, 600 bucks. And then what? It's not even doing this last part for you. It should be figuring this out. And that's why I called my video, the, you know, the missing piece of Dirac Live, because this is the missing piece you need something to tell you what the target curve is per speaker to get the best experience out of your gear. So again, this is the same exact speaker, but you can see by the measurements here in both the bedroom and the studio, these are all different measurements. Just look at what's happening, you know, uh, uh, around 10 K here in the bedroom. It's not happening here in the studio. So we need to have target curves for those speakers that that something needs to be done. And that's what true target is doing, right? It is correcting for these anomalies, same speaker, different location, different room. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is rear height left. We have the same problem here with the Dirac target curve. Yep, same thing. The default Dirac target curve is doing the same thing. True target is fixing or changing the equalization to get a better response out of the speaker. And here it is for the studio. It's totally different. Totally different. And last but not least, wow, you can barely see that one. Rear height right, same thing again. We've got the default curve is just doing nothing. This is what Dirac wants to do to your system. Just let it let it pass. Let all the, let this huge hump pass uh, from, what is it, uh, 1500 to like 3000. And then all this big hump at 10K, they want you they want you to hear all that. Now on this one, it's it's a lot more smoothed out there's a little bit of correction that needed to be done over here between one and 2000, tiny bit over here, 400. And of course there's a little bit of a rise going up into what, like the, you know, 180 Hertz area, custom target curves for each space. That's what magic beans true target does. And from what I've experienced doing this method in multiple different rooms, one, two, three, four different rooms, 
with a multitude of different speakers. I've done it on Focals with a Denon receiver. I've done it on those same Focals with a Marantz Pre-Pro, the 7706. I did it with the um, LX505 on some real tiny speakers. And I've done it in here with the full monolith setup. And I've used a hodgepodge system, which is the bedroom 5.1.4 that has the monolith speakers along with the RBH I-85s. If you have different speakers, if you have different rooms, there's no reason you should be using the same target curve globally for everybody's room. It just doesn't make sense. This makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Again, we are running a promotion, March Madness promotion. Get $100 off Magic Beans. Get $15 off Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. Links and coupon codes are going to be in the description. The sale ends Monday at midnight. So you got a little time over the weekend to check out the video and think about what is it you want out of your home theater system. If you spent like, you know, 5000 plus on it, yeah, I know. It can sound like it's, you know, expensive to buy these things and then spend an hour. Oh my gosh. You spend an hour on your home theater and you'll you'll get years of amazing experiences out of it. Choice is yours.